Hello and welcome to my video game sound design series on Absinthe 5. So in this video, we're just going to get started really quick and I'm going to introduce some basic features to you. Now, we're going to go through this in a way where I'm just going to introduce features to you as they come up. I'm not going to give you a full tour and then expect you to remember it all. So in this video, I'm going to show you the basic interface and also introduce you to the mutation feature, which is a really cool way to just start getting some neat sounds right away. So Absinthe is really famous for being really good at making strange, otherworldly ambiences and sounds. It's very famous for its ambiences, in fact. So I'm just going to play you a random sound from this library. I'm just going to click this Ambistract sound over here on the right. I'm just going to hold the key down. So you can hear, even though it has a really, really long tail, that it has a really interesting sort of evolving sound to it. And Absinthe can make all sorts of different stuff. It's not just that, but it's very famous for making that sort of stuff. Now, throughout this video series, I'm going to show you how to make different stuff, but that is one aspect of this. Now, when you open up Absinthe for the first time, you'll see some sort of interface like this, where you can choose different parameters to filter your sounds by. So if I want something that sounds like a synth pad, that's bright, that's chordal, these are the sounds that come with it that will sound something like that. So if I click Rising Sun, for example, we have some synth bright chordal sort of stuff, which is pretty cool. So if you're just looking for stuff to start with, this is a great way to go. Now, one thing I want to introduce to you is that mutation feature, which is really freaking cool. And that lives down here where it says sound mutation. So I'm just going to pick a sound. You know what? We'll stick with this rising sun sound. And what this mutation feature does in theory is allows us to mutate or change our sound, basically dependent on parameters that we set. So down here, you see we have a mutate button and we have this mutation amount and random amount slider. I want to turn this random amount slider down for just a moment. I'll explain what these are in a second. But how the sound is going to mutate is dependent on which parameters we pick up here in this window up above. So for example, if I want this rising sun sound to sound more like a mallet instrument, for example, and more like a bell and maybe monophonic, I can now click those three things and now start clicking mutate to change this sound that we already have more in the direction of these three attributes. Now, it's not always perfect, it's somewhat random, and you're gonna get some interesting sorts of sounds and this can be really useful for sound design when you just need some inspiration. So this mutation amount determines how far away from this original sound we're gonna get every time we click mutate. And this random amount determines how much extra stuff we're gonna introduce into the sound. So if the random amount is turned up, that means that we're going to get stuff that isn't just mallet, bell, monophonic. We're going to get other elements as well. Whereas if random is turned all the way down, we're only going to stay in mallet, bell, and monophonic land. So the more random we have, the more other elements are going to come into play. So I'm going to turn this down. I'm going to turn random, or sorry, mutation up a little more, and I'm going to hit mutate. So we heard rising sound before. Let's hear what it sounds like now. I have no idea what to expect. So pretty different from what we had before. And now I can just click mutate again. And it's more bell-like kind of monophonic mallet sort of instrument sound. And I can keep clicking this as much as I want. And you can see every time I click mutate in this bottom right, it says rising sun M6, M5, M4 for each mutation we have. That's because in this mutation history panel, it's keeping track of all these mutations that we make, which is really cool. If you come across a mutation that you really like, you can go back to it anytime. So you don't have to remember the parameters that it's mutating, it keeps track of that for you. So let's say we try M6, mutation six of Rising Sun. And we realize, okay, that's an interesting sound, but we really like mutation five a lot more. We can just click M5, click OK, and we're back to where we were. We're back on M5. 
which is really, really cool. That's super handy. And we can change these parameters to mutate towards at any time. So now we can mutate more towards a flute, whistle, dry sort of sound. And I'll click mutate a few times here. And it'll go more in that direction. Of course, it doesn't sound like a flute at all, but it's doing its best to go in that direction. Now, also one cool thing you can do is click this retry button and that overwrites the current mutation you're on. So maybe you're like, ah, M9 sucks. I don't like this at all. Fine, you can hit retry and it'll retry that mutation. So it'll just redo it. It won't add another one to the history. It'll just try M9 again, basically. And you can keep, keep clicking retry. I'll click it a whole bunch. Until you get something that maybe you like. Now, if you click keep clicking mutate, you'll get more and more and more different effects. If you keep, keep clicking retry, it'll base it off the previous mutation. Now, if I add a whole bunch of random in here and click mutate, we'll get some more effects to it. We'll get more changes made to it. So you can hear that that sound is changing more and more the more I click mutate now that this random amount is up. And you can play around with this. This whole section is really fun and can yield some interesting sounds. I use this all the time when I just need some inspiration. I need to know, okay, I have an interesting sound to make. Let's see what we can make based on some parameters up here and make it work. And of course, I'll dive in and tweak stuff after, but it's a good starting point when you're just kind of clueless and looking for something to make. So that's a great place to start with absence just to have some fun with. Now, one cool thing you can do here is if you click this attributes tab in the top left, you can now save this patch and add your own parameters, your own attributes to it. So you can choose which bank you want to save it to. You can choose what attributes apply to your sound. You can change the author to your name up here. and go on from there. And you can make your own sound that way. So anytime from then on that you want to bring the sound up, you know that when you click these attributes, this will pop up. Then you can click save, save it wherever you want, call it whatever the heck you want, and it'll start popping up in your presets using this attributes tab. Now you can go into the browser, click those same attributes, and your new sound will show up in that list. So that's what I wanted to show you today. Just have fun with this mutation section. We'll go way more in depth to all of these confusing looking windows later. Absinthe is very, very confusing and very overwhelming at first. Don't worry. We'll dive into all this sort of stuff so you know how to use every single aspect of this program. So thanks so much for watching. And if you like this video, of course, sign up for my newsletter. That's where I give out all my best stuff for those of you who want a career in the game audio industry. And give me a like, subscribe to the channel because I make a video every single week. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.